I was so excited to see him again. It had been three months since we last met, and I missed him terribly. He was studying in another city, and we could only talk on the phone or video chat. But today was his birthday, and I wanted to surprise him with a visit. I bought a train ticket for the earliest departure, packed a small bag, and left a note for my roommate. The train station was crowded and noisy, but I didn't mind. I was happy and eager to get on board. I found my seat in the second car near the window. It was a four-hour ride, but I had brought a book and some snacks to pass the time. I settled in and waited for the train to leave. The whistle blew and the train started moving. I looked out the window and waved goodbye to the city. I felt a surge of anticipation and joy. Soon I would be in his arms again. I opened my book and tried to read, but I couldn't focus. My mind kept wandering to him. His smile, his voice, his touch. I wondered what he would say when he saw me. Would he be happy? Surprise? Angry? I hoped he wouldn't be mad at me for showing up unannounced. I wanted to make his day special. I checked my phone and saw that it was 9. 15 a.m. The train was supposed to arrive at 1 p.m. So I still had plenty of time. I decided to take a nap and set an alarm for 12.30 p.m. I closed my eyes and drifted off to sleep. I woke up with a start. Something was wrong. I felt a cold sweat on my forehead and a tightness in my chest. I looked at my phone and saw that it was 11. 45 uh, a.m. my alarm hadn't gone off yet, but I felt like I had overslept. I looked around and realized that something else was wrong. The train was empty. There was no one else in the car. No passengers, no conductor, no staff. I felt a surge of panic and confusion. Where had everyone gone? I got up and walked to the door that connected to the next car. I tried to open it, but it was locked. I banged on it and shouted, but there was no response. I tried the other door, but it was also locked. I was trapped. I ran back to my seat and grabbed my bag. I searched for my phone and tried to call him, but there was no signal. I tried to call 911, but there was no dial tone. I tried to text, but there was no service. I was cut off from the world. I looked out the window and saw that the train was still moving. But where was it going? The scenery outside was unfamiliar and bleak. There were no signs of civilization, no roads, no buildings, no buildings, no trees. Just barren hills and rocks and dust. I felt a cold shiver down my spine. Something was very wrong. I had to get off this train. I looked for an emergency exit or a window that could be opened, but there were none. The windows were sealed and tinted, blocking any view of the outside. The only way out was through the doors, but they were locked. I felt a wave of despair and hopelessness. I was trapped on a moving train with no one else around and nowhere to contact anyone. What was happening? Why was this happening? Why was this happening? Was this some kind of nightmare? I sat down on the floor and hugged my knees. I tried to calm myself down and think rationally. Maybe this was a prank or a mistake. Maybe someone had forgotten to unlock the doors or check the car before leaving. Maybe someone would notice soon and come to help me. I looked at my phone again, 
and saw that it was 12.15 p.m. The train should have arrived by now, but it hadn't stopped or slowed down. It just kept going at the same speed. I wondered how long it would take before it ran out of fuel or reached the end of the line. I heard a faint sound from the other side of the door. It sounded like a click or a clack. I got up and pressed my ear against the door. I heard it again. It was a rhythmic sound, like someone tapping on the door. I knocked back and said, hello. Is anyone there? Please help me. The tapping stopped. I waited for a reply, but there was none. I knocked again and said, please, I'm stuck in here. Can you open the door? The tapping resumed, but faster and louder. It sounded like someone was pounding on the door with their fists. I backed away from the door and felt a surge of fear. Who or what was on the other side? I heard a voice from the door. It was low and raspy like someone who had smoked for years. It said, let me in. I froze and felt a chill in my bones. The voice was not human. I said, who are you? What do you want? The voice said, let me in. I said, no, go away, leave me alone. The voice said, let me in. I said, no, help, someone help me. The voice said, let me in. I screamed and ran to the other end of the car. I looked for something to defend myself with, but there was nothing. Just seats and luggage racks and trash bins. I heard a loud bang from the door. It sounded like someone had kicked it hard. I heard another bang and another. The door was shaking and rattling. The voice was still saying, let me in. I cried and prayed and wished this was all a bad dream. Suddenly, the door burst open and a figure emerged. It was a tall, gaunt man with gray skin, sunken eyes and bony fingers. He wore a black suit and a top hat, but his clothes were torn and stained with blood. He had a wide, toothless grin on his face and his breath smelled like decay. He said, hello, my dear. I've been waiting for you. I backed away and felt a scream rise in my throat. This was not human. This was a monster, a demon, a ghost. He said, don't be afraid. I won't hurt you much. I just want to play a game. He lunged at me, and I ran to the other end of the car. He chased after me, laughing and hissing. I felt his cold fingers brush against my hair, and I knew that I was in grave danger. I tripped over a suitcase and fell to the floor. He loomed over me, his face inches away from mine. His eyes glowed red and his tongue flicked out of his mouth. He said, here's the game, my dear. I will give you three choices. Choose wisely or suffer the consequences. He held up his hand and I saw that he had three objects in his palm. A rusty nail, a broken glass shard, and a bloody knife. He said, choose one, my dear. Which one will you take? I shook my head and tried to crawl away, but he grabbed my arm and pulled me back. He said, choose. Time is running out. The train will soon reach the end of the line. And then, well, let's just say that it won't be pretty. I looked at the objects and felt sick with fear. None of them were good choices. Each one would hurt me, maim me, kill me. I said, I won't choose. I won't play your game.
He said, Oh, but you must. It's the rules. You're trapped in my world now, my dear. And in my world, I make the rules. He raised the nail and pressed it against my cheek. He said, choose. I closed my eyes and prayed for a miracle. I hoped that someone, anyone, would hear my cries and rescue me. Suddenly, the train screeched to a halt and the lights went out. I heard a loud hiss, like steam escaping from a pipe. When the lights came back on, the monster was gone. I stumbled out of the car and saw that I was in a strange station. It was old and decrepit, with broken benches and peeling walls. There was no one around, no sign of life. I ran to the exit and burst through the door. I saw that I was in a deserted town with boarded up shops and abandoned houses. There was no sound, no movement, no sign of civilization. I collapsed on the ground and wept. I knew that I had escaped the monster, but at what cost? I was alone in a strange place with no way to get home. And then I heard a faint sound, like a whisper. It said, Welcome to my world, my dear. I hope you enjoy your stay. For just $3 a month, you can have your name featured in my YouTube videos and descriptions. Not only will you be supporting my channel, but you'll also be immortalized in the credits of my content. If you're looking for something a bit more personalized, consider becoming a $25 a month patron. I'll voice your stories and bring them to life on my channel. Create a special drawing just for you, or even write a unique story tailored to your interests. So don't hesitate. Join my Patreon community today and help me keep the spooky stories coming. And remember, together we can save each other from the YouTube algorithm. Thank you for your support.